Hello and welcome to another episode of Chef Carter's Cooking Corner. So today I'm going to be cooking a very special dish, something I used to make as a child with my parents. And maybe some of you have heard of it, maybe not. And it's called Scrapple. I'm using pork steaks. You know, because you want something that has a bone and you want something that has a lot of fat. So I'm going to lay my pork steaks in there. Alright, so I have four pork steaks. So there is my pork steak. And just to get it started, I'm just going to add a little bit of salt. And we're going to cover this with water. And you know, somebody asked me for the recipe for scrapple before one of the young ladies I grew up with. And I told her, you know, it's something I just have to show you. So, I'm going to go ahead and pour water over here, and that was about three quarts of water. Now, it looks like the water is not really that much in there, but remember, it's kind of hard to tell with the camera. But there is um, some space between the strainer and the bottom. So again, that strainer, what that's going to do is ensure that I have no bones in the broth when it comes time to remove the bones from the meat. But you want the bones in there because the marrow contains a lot of nutrients and a lot of flavor. So you do want to keep the bones in while you're cooking the meat. So I'm going to cover this and take it to the stove and we're going to cook it for a couple of hours on low. Okay, but I will start it on high and then once it starts boiling, I will turn it to low. So it's been about two hours since I started the meat and it's on low you see there's a lot of steam and so I can tell here it's starting to fall off the bone but the meat is still stuck to the bone so we want the meat to come off the bone by itself without me having to pull it so you can see you know the fat is still in contact the meat's not falling apart yet so this has been two hours and we need the meat to be falling apart. We need these bones to be separated from the meat. It's been about an hour more, actually more about 45 more minutes. I was starting to smell the meat cooking so I decided to check it. So here's a bone and it's almost all the way loose. Okay, so it's still hanging on. So we're gonna wanna cook that a little bit more. There we go. All right, so I'm looking to see if the bones, yeah, see how the bones are without the meat now? So that's ready to go. So, what I'm going to do is I got to lift this out and you see how the water is draining and then I'm going to get a couple plates to put that on. Alright, now what I'm going to do, as you can see I moved the meat to a plate and I have a bowl and an empty plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through this meat and Pick out the bones, 
look for any uh, any bones so that you know we we don't want anyone to bite down on a bone while they're eating the scrapple so as you can see this meat is really tender just falling apart oh it's hot All right, so that's good for now, and it will continue to come apart as we're making the scrapple. My parents, they would make it all the time, and we're from Indiana, you know, and I hear it's very popular in um, Pennsylvania and... New Jersey, I think 2010, I went to Philadelphia with my dad, and um, I was surprised to find that they sold Scrapple in the diner, and um, so of course I ordered it, and now, I have placed the meat back in the broth, and I have it on high because we want to bring the broth back up to a boil. Alright, so it shouldn't take long because I was very quick with the meat. Alright, we just got to wait. So, I have two cups of cornmeal. Um, I've never really measured the cornmeal before. Um, you always just, I always just kind of did it by sight. Um, so, my gut is telling me it's going to be about two and a half to three cups of cornmeal. So, you can see it's kind of lumping up on me. So, what this is, this is cornmeal mix. So, let me go ahead and keep adding. Maybe I need to just dump it in there. There we go. Ooh, let me turn it down. So my seasoning is black pepper, sage, and salt. So you're going to add about a half a teaspoon, wish I could do this, <laughs> there we go, half a teaspoon of black pepper. And remember, pepper's flavor expands, so you don't want to go overboard on the black pepper. So I'm going to do about a tablespoon of salt. So I went ahead and I turned this down a little bit. So yeah, it's about a tablespoon of salt, so it's a lot to flavor in there. And then you're going to want a couple tablespoons of sage. So that's, ooh, that's about a tablespoon and a half, I would say it's going to be about three or four tablespoons of ground sage. All right, so I had to move your camera, move the camera, and I've been still mixing and knocking those lumps out. I added another tablespoon of salt because I taste it, and it, the seasoning needed to be adjusted. I also added another heaping tablespoon of sage and another pinch of pepper. All right, so it's starting to smooth out on me. Oh, this is a workout, I'll tell you. So I'm going to take a spoon, just take a little bit. Okay. So I think I still need, because it's a lot of water, a lot of cornmeal. So 
so it still needs a little more salt. You hear it? So these air bubbles are forming and popping to the top and that's when you know it's done. All right. So I have my cake pan over here. You can't really see it. So what I'm going to do is use a ladle to scoop it. And see, see how heavy just this ladle full is? And what I'm going to do is move it over to the cake pan a little at a time. All right, so I'll get back with you. All right, so I have one pan filled. And, you know, a lot of times people will put them in loaf pans, and that's fine, too. Um, when I was growing up, we put them in any square or rectangular shaped pan we had. Because we used to make quite a bit of it. What I made here is nothing compared to what we used to make when I was a kid. It's a small batch. <laughs> so... Go ahead, move this on over. You want to work kind of fast so it doesn't solidify too much, and then it'll be harder to work into one mass in the pan. Right. And you always smooth it out. As smooth as you can get it so that is how you make scrapple thank you for joining me for another episode of chef Carter's cooking corner please remember to like subscribe and share and be sure to tune in tomorrow so you can see how I slice and cook this up in the skillet to be served for breakfast or brunch.